powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manoweta, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. Welcome to this live transmission broadcast. I believe God has a word for us today. And today I'll be sharing with people who have passion for the supernatural to minister the healing power of God to people. The first thing I want to establish is that the will of God is that we manifest His power. This is the will of God that we manifest His power. We change the lives of people, and the medium for doing that is the Word of God. When you're called to bring the healing power of God to your generation, to preach the Word with power, you know, there are a lot of people who said the days of healing is over, the days of miracles is over. Those people are speaking from where they are. They are not speaking for what they know. You know, Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And one of the ways you become free is to know who Jesus is. If we know who Jesus is, then we are able to understand his expectation for us. As the body of Christ, we can understand his expectation for us. You know, because if you read the mission statement of Jesus, that is also the mission statement of the church. Jesus said, I came that you will have life and have it more abundantly. That is what the New Testament church should be about. The New Testament church should be all about helping people to experience the abundant life. But we cannot successfully do that when we doubt the ability of God. But when we fail to believe in the, the, the miracle working power of God, the, the healing power of God, signs and wonders, because just because there is a counterfeit doesn't mean there is no original. The reason for the counterfeit is because there is an original. You can go to America and say, I have a thousand dollar note. If someone goes to America right now with a thousand dollar note, everybody knows that that is fake. They understand hundred dollar notes. They understand fifty dollar notes. They understand $20 notes. They understand $10 notes. They understand $5 notes. They understand $1 notes. So when someone comes down and brings out a $1,000 note, he just lied. And people know it is not unacceptable. People know that it is not acceptable. Now, you, you can't have the counterfeit except you first have the original. But if American government decide that they're going to have a thousand dollar note, then people can try to do the counterfeit. So you can't truly really have a counterfeit without first having an original. So just that a lot of people are skeptical about the supernatural, the manifestation of the power of God, doesn't mean that we don't have the real supernatural. Doesn't mean that Jesus is not healing people. Jesus is healing. Jesus is saving. Jesus is ministering to people today by his word. 
So a person who is called into preaching the gospel is also called to minister the healing power of God. Why did I say that? The healing power of God flows through the word of God. I said the healing power of God flows through the word of God. I said the healing power of God flows through the word of God. So when the word of God is going forth, the healing power of God is going forth. You know, in Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So if we want to minister the power of God to people, number one, we have to remove every limitation we have ever conceived. That the days of miracle is over, the signs and wonder days are over. We need to remove all of those things from our mind. We need to stay out of such thoughts and ideology because it is not God's will. Because the power of God can only flow when people believe. He said that Abraham believed God, it was counted for him for righteousness. And are there are things that can limit us. Someone can say, but I am not a healing minister. I am not called into the ministry of healing. I'm not called into the ministry of seeing the power of God. When I hear people say things like that, I used to be amazed and say, but the, but the gospel is the power of God. The gospel healing is not only when the cripple rise up. When it comes to healing, is spirit, healing is soul and body. Healing is soul and body. You know, your soul, there are a lot of people that are sick emotionally. There are people who are sick emotionally. There are people who are, they are sick mentally. There are those who are sick in their body. So when we talk about the healing power of God, it's not only limited to bodily healing. When we talk about the healing power of God, it is not limited to bodily healing. So everyone in Christ Jesus can manifest the healing power of God according to the statement of Jesus concerning the Great Commission. He said, in my name, these signs shall follow them that believe. They will cast out devils. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will be healed. This is the statement of Jesus. He said, they will lay their hands on the sick. So, if you are born again, you are qualified to manifest the healing power of God. If you're born again, you are qualified to manifest the healing power of God. But the reason for lack of the manifestation is because we have not trained ourselves to release the power of God. You know, the Bible, Paul was right, and he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of the mind. You see, when we renew our mind in the knowledge of the Word of God, if we renew our mind in the knowledge of the Word of God, it helps us to release the healing power of God. Now, if you look at Acts 10, 38, he said, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, if you watch God anointed Jesus, he didn't anoint him for nothing. He anointed him for purpose. And today, Christ lives in us, the source of the healing power dwells in us. You see, if we are ignorant of this, we cannot flow in the supernatural. When we have this mentality or this mindset, oh, this minister is calling to healing, oh, this man of God is calling to miracles, then every other person is not called to do that. We have this mentality, this person is anointed for healing, for miracles, but this other person is not. But let me say this to you. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ can only be in full manifestation depending on your knowledge about the gospel. You see, what you don't know, you cannot experience. Many years ago, I used to be a highly motivational speaker. I used to do a lot of motivational seminars, motivation and one day I had a dream from the Lord, and the Lord showed I was in a crusade meeting, and I saw a man on a wheelchair. And when I saw the man on the wheelchair, I, I went to him and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And when the man walked, then I heard the word of the Lord saying to me, this is how it should be. This is how 
it should be. That simply means what was God telling me. He said, if you preach my word, you cannot separate it from the manifestation of my power. That simply means whenever God's word is going forth, there is a visibility of the power of God available to everyone who will make the connection. The power of God is available. To everyone who will make the connection. So this this has nothing to do with you being uh, saying to yourself, oh, I'm a healing minister, or oh, this and that. This is for every believer. Until we have this knowledge, we we'll always exclude ourselves from walking in the power of God. We we'll always say, well, I'm not this person. You call this evangelist. You call this person. You call that person. The power of God begins to flow through you when you acknowledge it. I said the power of God begins to flow through you when you acknowledge it. Anybody can see miracles. Anybody can see healing. Anybody can see signs and wonder. I'm telling you, the power of God, you know, you know, if you watch up, uh, yesterday I was doing teaching in church about healing and I, the video is on YouTube is the, the, the healing power of God and the end section of the meeting, the power of God broke out in the meeting, the video is on YouTube, you can go watch it, the healing power of God. And the, the power of God, things started happening, you know. No, now we can stay up the power. We, how do we stay up the power of God? We stay up the power of God by praying in the Spirit. We also stay up the power of God by teaching about it. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Whatever is in the atmosphere determines the manifestation that will be available to people. A, a great preacher said to God, God, why am I not seeing miracles in my church? Why am I not seeing healing in my church? And then God told him, you don't preach about it. You don't preach about it. Because you don't preach about it, you won't see it. It is only what you preach about you're going to have. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So some people have been praying, oh God, use me in the area of healing. God, use me in the area of miracle. How do you talk about healing? Do you preach about healing? Do you walk up to people and tell them God can heal you? Do, do you minister on healing? Because if you don't sow the seed, you can't see the harvest. If we want to see more miracles, more healing, more signs and wonders, then we have to talk about it. Then we have to teach it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. A lot of people are expecting miracles to break out, but they're not teaching on it. They're expecting healing to break out, but they're not teaching on it. The, the, the teaching has to come before the manifestation. Because it is not manifestation before teaching. It is teaching before manifestation. According to the picture that Jesus gave to us, Jesus gave to us, and Jesus was was teaching, was preaching, and was healing the sick. He was healing. Teaching, preaching, and healing was a major part of his ministry. So don't exclude yourself. Is one of the things you need to establish. You don't have to exclude yourself and say, well, I'm not called into the healing ministry or I'm not anointed for healing. I'm not anointed for miracles. Why do you say that? Because if you say you're not anointed for healing, you're not anointed for miracle. what about the Christ in you? Because if Christ is in you, you are expected to walk in the revelation of that Christ in you. He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if Christ is in me, I can lay my hands on the sick and the power of God will transfer. I can lay my hands on the blind, their eyes can be opened. I can speak in the name of Jesus and things will begin to happen. But most of the time, we don't see ourselves being qualified to do those things. So we think that, oh, apostle will do that. Oh, apostle, this will do that. Apostle, the prophet is this will do that. Oh, this person will do that. So we exclude ourselves and then we say, this man, God has given him the healing power. Oh, this man, God has given him the teaching power. Now, so we have all of these things we have divided in the body of Christ, not knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you. Uh, you know, when you look at the, the, the Bible, those who saw more of manifestation of power were those who wanted to see it. I'm telling you. Miracles. If you want to see more of miracles, then you got to talk about it. Then you need to have an expectation. You don't teach without an expectation. You don't pray without an expectation. You pray with expectation. You teach with expectation. You think with expectation. You depend on the Holy Ghost with an expectation that something is going to break out. That something is going to happen. So you, you, you don't just exclude yourself and say, well, I'm not anointed. No! The day you got born again, you are anointed, but you have to grow in the knowledge of the word. 
As you grow in the knowledge of the word, it is easy to lay hands on people and see visitation of power. And see manifestation of power as you lay hands on them. As you pray with an expectation. You know, we said as the spirit will. Let me say this to you. The spirit is always willing. The spirit is always willing. The Holy Ghost is always willing to heal people. The Holy Ghost is always healing, willing to minister life to people. God wants to heal people. God, God is not happy that people are sick. God, He doesn't give God joy. There is no joy in, in seeing people being sick and being frustrated. God wants to minister to them. And sometimes we are not sensitive enough to know that God wants us to go through that path. And then we look at ourselves and say, well, I can't do this. Well, I can't do that. Let me say this to you. If you pray for the person and you didn't see an instant manifestation of healing, don't give up. I want to say that again. If you pray for a person and you did not see the instant manifestation of a healing, I said what? Don't give up. If you stay in faith and the one you're praying for stays in faith, the healing will manifest because it is the word of God. God's word will not return back to him void. The word of God will not return back to God's voice. So if you are watching this broadcast and you're born again, you can lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. And if you walk in the consciousness of the power of God, the miraculous becomes your way of life. If you walk in the consciousness of the power of God, the miraculous becomes your way of life. The miraculous becomes your way of life. If you walk in the manifestation of the power of God, the miraculous becomes your way of life. You can flow in power. You can flow in the things of the Spirit. You can flow in greater manifestation of the things of the Spirit if you don't walk in the consciousness of the Holy Ghost in you. So from this day forward, expect the power to manifest. Expect the healing to break out. Expect the miracle to happen. Expect the deliverance to take place. Expect the flow of the Spirit. Expect the, the manifestation of the power of God. So you have to be conscious that the power of God is inside of you. Compassion is important if you want to minister healing to people. You do have to be compassionate. If you don't have compassion, you can't flow in the miraculous. I said, if you don't have compassion, you cannot flow in the miraculous. If you don't have compassion, you can flow in the miraculous. You know, so many years ago, I, I never saw healings in my meeting. I never saw much manifestation of miracles because then I, I never had this revelation. I never had this revelation. But from the day I received the revelation that Christ is in me, for this reason I can see healing, I can see miracle, everything change. Can, you, can I say this to you? Your situation is subject to change by revelation. You need to see yourself the way God saw you. He saw you as a person who is powerful. Look at Jesus. He gave the power to his apostles. You know, he said, go in my name, heal the sick, raise the dead. You know, and they came back and they were rejoicing. They came back and they were rejoicing. If you would take that scripture to be your rema, you will produce the same results. I'm telling you. If you read the Bible, believe it. I'm telling you, if you read the Bible, believe it, and we can decide what we believe. What am I supposed to believe? I believe that Jesus will heal the sick. I believe that Jesus will raise the dead. I believe that Jesus will do the miracle. I believe that signs and wonders is the will of God. I believe that the days of miracles are not over. I believe that today I will see healing and miracles. If I pray for the sick, something is going to happen. You see, if you don't train yourself in this, it will be difficult to flow in the power. you got to train yourself in this. You gotta train. Oh, I don't think God wants to heal her. Oh, I don't think it's the will of God to heal her. Get up, get that thinking out of the way. God wants to heal her. God wants to deliver her. God wants to minister life to her. God wants to reach out to her. So imagine the one who is praying is not even believing. So how are we going to have manifestation? We can't have manifestation with faith that is not rooted in God's word. So if you're called to minister the healing power of God, you have to exercise it. You exercise it by faith with an expectation that things will remain the same as you pray. You have to expect it. You know, sometimes I 
I'm going to these meetings to preach for people or to walk into a place and the power of God just come upon me and I go start ministry. A lady was to uh, destroy her life some few weeks back and I walk into a shop to pick up something and the Holy Ghost began to talk to me about the lady. So I started talking to her. She said, I don't know you. How did you know about my problems? I was ministering to her until the power of God descended. And that girl wanted to just take her life. She doesn't know what to do with her life anymore. That girl right now is happy because the demon that was after her was ruined. I ruined that demon. How did I ruin the demon? By releasing the word of God to the lady and something amazing break out in her. Let me say this to you. If you are preaching the gospel, you have the right to expect the manifestation of power. I said, if you are preaching the gospel, you have the right to expect the manifestation of power. If you are preaching the gospel, how can you preach the gospel and don't demonstrate the gospel? How can you preach the gospel but you don't demonstrate it? What is the essence of talking about that God is powerful, God is awesome, God is great? The question is, is he great in your life? Have you done it through you before? Have you seen God flow before? Have you seen the healing power before? Have you seen the anointing before? Have you seen the flow of the Spirit? So, can I say this to you? You can't talk about that God is great and then in manifestation you doubt. So, no, you have to believe it. If you say God is great, then you have to step up by faith with an expectation to see miracles. If you say God is a great God, you have to pray with an expectation to see supernatural release because you can't say God is a great God and then you don't expect the miraculous. If you say God is a great God, you have you need to have an expectation to see his greatness being manifested into any situation. In Acts chapter 3, you know, it's a very powerful thing we need to look at here. Acts, Acts, Acts chapter 3, thank you Holy Ghost, uh, thank you Holy Ghost, in Acts chapter 3, thank you Father, uh, and now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. This is one of the things that a, a, a minister is called to do, is called to pray. The call to pray is the call to sustain the passion and the fire for the things of the Spirit. The call to pray is, you know, prayer helps us to sustain spiritual passion. Passion for the move of God, passion for greater things of the Spirit. You know, you can grow in the things of the Spirit when you are a man of prayer. Prayer should be your way of life. Prayer shouldn't be what you do once in a while, what you do. No, no, prayer is a way of life. It is a way of life for a man of the Spirit. A man who wants to see more manifestation of the glory of God have to live from the place of prayer. What will happen when you're in the place of prayer? There is this kind of energy, uncommon energy, you generate as a result of being in the place of prayer. Uncommon energy you generate as a result of being in the place of prayer. So uh, they were about to go, they, they were on their way going to the place of prayer, and they saw this man in Acts chapter 3, verse 2. And a certain man was lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask of them that enter into the temple. And now, sorry, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? Ask Anne, ask Anne, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. Now, if you watch Peter and John, we are walking in the consciousness of the Christ in them. As a minister of the gospel, if you're born again, you're, you're a minister of the gospel. If you're born again, you're a minister of the gospel. Why did I say you're a minister of the gospel? Because you've been called into the Great Commission to be among those that will preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Now, you may have not been called to be an apostle or prophet or evangelist or teacher or pastor, but the day you got born again, you are called to preach the word of God. And if you're going to preach it, you have to preach it on expectation to see the manifestation of the power of God. Never preach the word of God without an expectation because expectation is important in the release of power. Expectation. By faith, we announce that God is going to heal people here today. Miracles are going to take place here today. In the name of Jesus, I see healing taking place here. When you begin to say things like that, you are already creating the atmosphere for the healing. 
When you come and say, I see God healing people today. Yokes will be broken today in this place. In the name of Jesus, there's going to be signs and wonder. But when you say that, the atmosphere has already picked that. When you say that, it is already in the atmosphere waiting for manifestation. You know, some people want to preach and they say, well, whatever God will do, he will do. You know, whatever God, you know, you can't talk like that. We are faith people. We need to be bold to tell the people God is going to bring healing today. If you're sick, you get ready to be healed. If you're battling with any issue, get ready to be delivered because Jesus will heal you today. You see, this is a word of faith. And because it's a word of faith, the people are receiving. You know, if you look at Luke chapter 5, verse 1, the Luke Gospel chapter 5, verse 1, it says the people press to hear the word. The people press to hear the word. They press to hear the word. Because in hearing the word of God, the word of God contains the healing power of God. The word of God contains the energy of God. The life of God is in his word. So when his word is going forth, it is a life of God going forth. So how can the word of God go forth and people are not healed? It's not true. Just that most of the people who may be teaching it don't believe that miracles can be happening while they're teaching their healing can be breaking out while they are teaching. We need to walk in the consciousness of the healing power of God for we to have the manifestation of the power. If we don't walk in the consciousness of it, it's gonna we can't see it. You know, many years ago, I passed up many years ago and people couldn't really, you know, I, I couldn't really I couldn't see much manifestation of the power of God. I, I believe it was because of I wasn't really exposed to it at the early stage of ministry. You know, so but when God begins to show me all of these things, I say, No, I need to share this with people because there are a lot of people right now, they are preaching the gospel, but they are not seeing the power because they think that the power is different from the gospel. Some people think that this is the power of God and this is the gospel. No, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel, that same gospel you're preaching, in that same gospel, the energy of God is there that will lead to miracles, signs, and wonders. So you don't separate the gospel from the power of God. When you do that, that simply means you're putting yourself in a hole not to see the manifestation of the power of God. That's what many people do. They think that the gospel is different from the power. You know, oh, I'm just preaching the gospel, I'm just preaching the gospel. The gospel is not different from the power. The power is in the gospel. The power is in the gospel. When you are preaching the word of God, you are releasing the power of God. If you have that mindset, that mentality, then things will begin to break out. When you are preaching the gospel, you are releasing the power of God. Now, in Luke chapter 5, verse 17, in Luke 5, 17, Jesus was teaching and the power of God was present to heal the sick. Jesus was teaching. And the power of God was present to heal the sick. So there was no way the sick would have been healed if not for the word of God that came forth. As he was teaching, the power of God was present. So one of the ways you make the power of God present in a meeting is by teaching about Jesus. Is by teaching about what he has done, what he's doing, and what he can do. When we teach about him, his presence is a proof of his power. His presence is a proof of the miraculous. So that was why in John Gospel chapter 6, when Jesus had to feed this crowd, and someone said, what is this among many? You know, five loaves of bread and two small fishes can he be able to take care of five thousand people and more? Uh, but you know, when, when when you when you walk by faith, you see the will of God. I said, when you walk by faith, you see the will of God. He said, when you walk by faith, you see the will of God. You you don't see limitation. What you see is the will of God. And when you see the will of God, what happens? The next thing we're going to have is manifestation because the knowledge of His will is the foundation for faith expression. If we're going to do a faith exploit, if we're going to do faith exploit, then we'll be conscious of his will. His will is healing. His will is provision. His will is open door. His will is increase. His will is miracle. He said, if your earthly parents
parents know how to give good gift to you, how much more your heavenly father. Your heavenly father is more interested in doing more than your biological parents. So you need to begin to understand that when the word of God is going forth, the same time the healing power of God is going forth, but most people don't believe that. So they don't see the manifestation because manifestation is also directly related to what you believe. You see, what I believe determines what I'm going to see. I said, what I believe will determine what I am going to say. So when you step into that church service, when you step into that mall, or when you go to a place and you're, you're talking to someone about Jesus, believe that at the same time you're talking to them about Jesus, that the healing power of God is present to heal them if they have a problem. The healing power of God is present to heal them. Don't make this mistake of saying that, well, this is just the gospel. No, it's, it's not just the gospel. This is the power of God coming to people. Come on. The gospel is the power of God coming to people. So because when we use that word, this is just the gospel. That means we, 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 we don't see it as the power of God. We separate the power from the gospel. No, the gospel is that the power is in the gospel. That same gospel you're preaching to that guy contains the power of God. That same gospel. So it can break addiction. It can break yoke. But most times people don't have an expectation to see this manifestation. So what happened? They just preach but nothing happened. That something could have happened but they don't believe that something will happen. Because the way they preach it, they were not stirred up for the visitation to break out. They were not stirred up for the manifestation to break out. So they finished preaching, but no miracle, no healing, no no deliverance, nobody was saved, nothing happened. They went back home, and the same thing they do all the time, because they don't preach with an expectation that there's going to be a flow of God's power. And when you don't preach on expectation or you don't teach on expectation, you can see power. As a ministry right now, there's a lady watching me and you're taking notes. And the power and the power of God is upon you. Listen to this. God has called you to make a difference. Stop looking at yourself and start looking at the Christ in you. Stop looking at yourself and start looking at the Christ in you. You will see right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the power of God upon you. Yes, you can feel that. Yes, we see right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now listen to this. The power of God is already inside of you. Ephesians 3 verse 20 said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask nor think, according to the power that worketh in us. There is a power that worketh in us. You are carrying the power of God. You are you, you are a mobile temple. You are carrying the power of God. Whenever you are moving, the power is moving. Whenever you are moving, the power of God is right inside of you. So you, you need to walk in that consciousness that as I move, the power is here. That I came with the power of God. You know, you, someone is bold to say, Christ in me, the hope of glory. But how many people are bold to say, the power of God is in me. Christ in me, the power of God. Christ in me, the power of God, the power of God is in me. I came here to pray that someone will be healed. I came here to pray that someone will be delivered. You see, that is a kind of mentality that break you off from this mindset that I cannot see healing, I cannot see miracle. But when you begin to walk in the consciousness and this revelation, because Christ is in me, he is the power of God. Christ in me is the wisdom of God. So I have the power, I have the wisdom. So what am I going to do? By faith, I will express it. By faith, I am going to express this power. Every born again child of God on the face of the earth today is full of the power of God, is full of God's power because of the Christ in them. Because Christ is in you, is the hope of glory. But when it comes to the manifestation, it takes knowledge, understanding to see manifestation. Because manifestation is a product of faith that is released. Until our faith is released, there can be manifestation of power. When faith is being released, then things begin to happen. The healing begins to happen. The deliverance begins to happen. Manifestation. That was why the scripture said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
How does faith come? It comes by hearing. It comes by hearing. You keep listening to this teaching over and over. You keep listening because as you listen to the word of God, the anointing begins to rise. The anointing begins to rise. As the anointing begins to rise in you, the boldness begins to rise. Then you're looking for someone to lay your hands on. You're looking for the dead to raise. You're looking for a place to minister. You want to say something because inside of you can feel it that there is a power of God within me. Because as you're hearing that word, faith is rising. As you're hearing that word, an atmosphere of possibility is being created where the impossible is going to be possible. This is why those who have the revelation of the Christ in them will always supersede every limitation and every human expectation of them because the knowledge of that Christ in them is the key to walking in dominion, in liberty, in power, in the expression of the miraculous. We can have this experience, people of God. You can see healing. You can see miracles. You can see signs and wonders. Yes, you can see healing. You can see miracles. You can see signs and wonders. I want to say it again. I said you can see healing. You can see miracles. You can see signs and wonder. All you got to do, get into the word of God, begin to pray in the spirit, preach with an expectation, trust God, release your faith. You, we release our faith two words. We release our faith two words. The, the, the woman of issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 from verse 25 to 35. Mark chapter 5 from verse 25 to 35. She heard about Jesus and she said, she heard and she said. So, you know, she heard, she said. So faith, when you hear the word of God, you have to speak. Because speaking helps your faith. You, Jesus said, if you can say to this mountain, so you, you walk into the place, you said, I see God healing you today. Today is your day of healing. The one hearing you, their, his faith begins to rise as he's hearing. Today is my day of healing. I receive it in the name of Jesus. And now the boldness to lay hands, to minister begins to come. To you, you know, some people don't understand this. It's so simple. It's not as difficult as people think that you can really manifest the power of God. If you're born again, you're carrying the power. It will take the knowledge of his will to deploy the power. If you're born again, you're carrying the power. If you're born again, you're carrying the power. You're carrying the power. The power of God is for today. Miracles are for today. Miracles are for today. Miracles are for today. Are for today. Healing is for today. You know what it means that someone is sick and they, they called you and said this person has been sick for the past five years and she can't walk and she can't move and, and she can't do anything. And then... You went there with an expectation. And then you minister the word of the Lord to the person. Always begin ministering to people with the word of God. As you teach them and share with them, faith will rise in their hearts. Then they can expect when you pray, things will begin to happen. So when you walk to people, teach them the word. Share the word of God with them. Whether it's for 10 minutes or for 15 minutes or for 20 minutes, you share the word of God with them. And when that word comes to them, faith will rise in their heart. And when you say, can we pray? The atmosphere is ready for the release of manifestation of the healing of the person. And it's so important that you understand this because as you share the word with them, something is happening. The word of God is spiritual. The, the word of God contains power. It contains the liberating force of the spirit. The word of God contains the liberating force of the spirit. That was why Jesus will always teach. You know why he teach? Because as he teach, faith will come to people. And as, as they receive it, miracles will begin to happen. Signs and wonder. That was why he said, go into the world and preach the gospel. He said, preach the gospel. Go into the world. Let, let me show you this. You know, in, uh, in Mark chapter 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Mark 16, thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Mark 16, I believe this will minister so much to you. Mark 16, this is, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He, he started with the word preach, declare, declare, preach, preach the good news. He said, Because when you preach, you create an atmosphere that will determine verse 16, verse 17. Verse 17, verse 19, and verse 20. For you to see the manifestation of verse 16, verse 17, 
verse 19, verse 18 and 20. I'm reading Mark chapter 16, verse 15 is the foundation. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel. So when we preach, and I said, he that believeth. Now, because when, when that word goes forth, people are expected to believe. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be done. Now, verse 17 said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. When, when you preach the word and the people believe, the signs follow them. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. Because the word has gone for because the word has come to them, the word of God has come to them. They, 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 they believe that word. The next thing they're supposed to be seeing is miracles. Miracles is the next thing. Healing manifestation of the power of God. That's the next thing they're supposed to be seeing. Because Jesus said here, he said, he said, in Mark, sorry, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark 16, 15, he said, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, unto everyone that believes, like I told you, when you're preaching the gospel, at the same time you're releasing the power of God. When you're preaching the gospel, at the same time, the power of God is coming to the atmosphere. The power of God is in the atmosphere. So you have to be sensitive to say, be healed, be saved, be delivered quickly. Because that word that is going, because we respond by faith. If you want to see manifestation, your faith must be active. Your faith must be active. Your faith must be active. And your faith is going to be active when you read the word. When you listen to the word of God, when you declare the word of God, your faith will be active. Your faith will be active. Your faith will be active. So when you walk into church service, when you go into the shopping mall, when you walk into a place, be sensitive to listen to the Holy Ghost. Be sensitive to listen to the Holy Ghost because that is something he wants to do. He, he, the Holy Ghost is always willing to heal the sick. He's always willing to deliver people. He's always willing to, to break the yoke of people. He's always willing. It is some of us that are not willing to do the job. We are looking for this experience. We are looking for that experience. We are looking, okay, I don't feel like the power of God is here. I don't feel. It's not about feeling. You don't have to feel the power. You have to believe the power. You don't have to feel that, oh, the power of God is upon me. You don't have to feel. It's not a feeling. We respond by faith. By faith, the power of God is upon me. By faith, we respond. By faith, we speak. By faith, we expect things to get better. So we're not, oh, I don't feel like I'm anointed. I don't feel like I'm not feeling it. No, you don't have to feel it. You have to believe it. Christ is in you. Don't say, I don't feel the Holy Ghost here. No. The Holy Ghost is not something you connect with by feeling. You connect with the Holy Ghost by revelation knowledge. By revelation knowledge, you know He's here. You know it's here. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That settles it. So you don't need feeling to make the connection. All you need to make the connection is your faith, not your feeling. And faith comes by knowledge. Knowledge of God's word. Now look at this. In verse 16, he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be damned. And verse 17 said, And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, he shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Because as the word of God has gone forth, and hence are laid on people, there is a release of the power of God. As hands are laid on people, he said they will lay hands on the sick. They will lay hands on the sick. He didn't say they will feel it. Oh, I feel like laying hands. Oh, I don't feel like. Oh, I feel. You know, some people, we're not here for feeling. We walk by faith. We're an expectation to see supernatural visitation as we speak the word of God. This is what leads to the manifestation of the miraculous. And in verse, verse 20 said, verse 20 said, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming it with signs following. They went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs. The Lord confirms the word. How does it? What did he? What was he confirming? He was confirming the word. So when you preach the word, you have released the power. The Lord is confirming it. He's confirming it with healing. He confirms it with miracle. He confirms it with deliverance. He they preach the word, and the Lord was confirming the word. Look at that scripture, Mark chapter sixteen, verse twenty. 
Mark 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They preach everywhere. This is what we should be doing. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. So when you are preaching, the Lord will be confirming it. When you are teaching, the Lord will be confirming it. When you are ministering, as if the word is going forth, the power is going forth. The healing is going forth. The deliverance is going forth. The signs and wonder is going forth. The signs and wonder is going forth. As you are declaring the word, as you are declaring the word, there is a manifestation of healing. As we are preaching the word, he will be confirming the word with signs, with healing, with miracles, with deliverance, with signs of wonder. The word, as the word goes forth, the healing goes forth. As the word goes forth, the healing goes forth, the deliverance goes forth, the signs of wonder goes forth, the supernatural release goes forth. As the word goes, he was confirming the word. He was confirming the word. From this day forward, as you preach, God will confirm it. As you teach, God will confirm it. As you minister to his people, he will confirm it with healing, with miracles, with signs and wonder. Expect supernatural intervention. Expect supernatural signs and wonder. Expect supernatural visitation of the Holy Ghost. Expect the outpouring of the Spirit. Expect divine release of the Spirit. When I read through the scripture, it was amazing. When I read it, he said, And they went forth. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They preached everywhere. He said, the Lord walking with them. Because they were preaching the word. Then he was walking with them as a minister of the gospel. As he preached the word, he wants to confirm it with healing, with power, with demonstration of the spirit, with the anointing, with the manifestation of the glory, with the release of favor, with the release of power. Thank you, Father. He was confirming the word. What will God confirm this year? The word. What will God confirm when you go out? The word. What will it confirm when you step in into a place to minister to people? The word. This is why you teach the word. Then you then there's going to be a manifestation far beyond your expectation. The power of God is in the word of God. I said the power of God is in the word of God. God. I said the power of God is in the word of God. Do you want to see the power of God? Do you want to see the manifestation of power? Do you want to see increase? Do you want to see the anointing? Do you want to see the release of the spirit? Do you want to see supernatural visitation? Then you have to stand at God's word. As you preach it with an expectation, he will confirm his word. He will confirm his word. What God will confirm is the word. No religion, no tradition, no argument. No, he confirms the word. And what is the word? Jesus is the healer. What is the word? Jesus say. What is the word? Jesus will heal you. Jesus will deliver you. As you preach about Christ, as you preach him, as you minister about him, the power of God will break forth in the atmosphere, causing people to be healed, to be set free, to be delivered because the anointing is in the word. I said the anointing is in the word. So when the word goes forth, the anointing goes forth. When the word goes forth, the anointing goes forth. He was confirming the word. He was confirming the word because that word was an anointed word. If you're watching this broadcast today, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You can say this after me. Hallelujah. If you're watching this broadcast, you don't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior. You can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. 
Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, we're glad that you did. We want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. You can also watch me on finishworktv.com. And also encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry through partnership by reaching people in the nations. You can do that on PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. God bless you so much for being part of this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, don't forget this.